UFC 277 weigh-in recap show, full card predictions, and the betting breakdown main event. Amanda Nunes fights Juliana Pena for a second time, looking to reclaim the throne. Make sure you guys smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn those post notifications on and share the video as well. Let's talk about each of the matchups after seeing the fighters on the scales. We'll start it off with fight one. It is Orion Kose and Blood Diamond. Kose did miss weight, not by a substantial amount, but it's concerning to see somebody miss weight. We'll pull up the face-off from the matchup at the ceremonial weigh-ins here and check them out. Kose definitely looks like he has a fair bit of fat that he could lose. Now, for him to win this fight, he needs it on the floor. Striking with Blood Diamond is a terrible idea for somebody as one-dimensional as Kose is standing, and honestly, he just doesn't have uh, a great striking game. He's awkward, winging hooks, in close range, he's square, hittable. Blood Diamond striking can knock him out. The problem is, do I think Blood Diamond has the ability to stop the takedown. I'm very concerned it's going to be a no. Blood Diamond's 34 years of age. He's only got four professional MMA fights. I think Kose wins this fight. Probably submission on the mat. Maybe a decision. A lot of wrestling. And I think he's going to be on top of Blood Diamond. I'm sticking with Kose. He's been the pick all week long. Though he missed weight. And that is concerning. We're still riding with him. Minus 185 best value line. Plus 181 for Blood Diamond. Not really a fight I love betting. I think it's an ugly wide line, especially with Kose missing weight. He should get the win. Over a round and a half, minus 125 best value. It's an okay play, but not my favorite. I don't like any of the props here. I'm really not feeling Kose inside distance. It's plus 105 too. I think it'd be too risky. He probably gets it done inside of the three rounds. I'm picking second round sub, but concerning pick and a concerning bet. We're going Kose for the win to beat Blood Diamond. But as a fan, I would like to see Blood Diamond knock him out, to be 100% real with you guys. Next fight of the night. Nick Negu Merianu and Ihor Poteria. I have been on Ihor Poteria all week. Both guys came in looking pretty solid on the scales. I actually thought Negu Merianu looked a little bit leaner than he normally does. You see some visible abs there. I think Poteria is going to be a problem from the kickboxing range. I know the reach does favor Nego Marianu. I don't necessarily know if that's going to be the exact stats with Tapology as listed. We'll find out tomorrow um, on, you know, fight day. I think Poteria's kickboxing and distance management fighting out of that southpaw stance is going to be hard for Nego Marianu to deal with. The scales don't make a big difference here, but I like the confidence from the Poteria side coming into his UFC debut. I'm expecting him to win. I'm banking on him. But I'm leaning at decision now. I was thinking knockout, but I'm feeling like decision might be more likely. It depends if Negu Mariano gets into a banger with him. Both guys, solid European prospect. I guess technically uh, Poteria from Ukraine, but Negu Mariano is a, a pretty solid dude. I mean, 12-1 and one record. He's got a solid three-fight win streak going for him in the UFC. I think Poteria probably takes it on the cards. I'll pick him by a decision to win. I think he outstrikes him. I think Negu Mariano... Not necessarily too stiff, but he doesn't do a fantastic job of keeping the head moving. Granted, I think he can take a solid shot, and I don't know about Poteria sleeping him. It could happen. Earlier on in the week, I was thinking maybe knockout, but I like Nego Mariano's shape for this matchup. I think if we go the full three, Poteria on the cards. Minus 115, Nego Mariano, Poteria, plus 107. I like the underdog in this spot. I do like the over one and a half at minus 152 a lot. I think that'd be a pretty quality play. Uh, Poteria to win a decision upwards of plus 480 as well. We're riding with Poteria to win the bout and beat Nick Negu Merianu. Let's keep running up. Next fight of the night. Jin Yoon Kim versus Jocelyn Edwards. Featherweight. Former featherweight, I guess, Jocelyn Edwards. She misses weight, though. Coming in here, taking on Kim. She comes in at 37 and a half. Pound and a half over. Comes in with a new haircut, too. Rocking the uh, bleach blue look. We'll pull her up and check them out on the scales. I don't like the weight, miss. It's just a fight in general that I really don't suggest betting. I don't like the weight, miss, from Edwards. Though I don't think 
it would be a huge difference maker. I feel like this fight's going to be pretty competitive throughout the three rounds. I do think Kim has a little bit more pop on her punches and a little tighter boxing, but I think Edwards is tricky with the kickboxing from distance. When they get into the clinch exchanges, I think it's fairly competitive. I don't know if there's a strength edge for Kim there or not, but maybe. I think she has a better center of gravity. I'm going to ride with Kim to win it on the cards, but I don't necessarily love the pick. I think Jocelyn Edwards and Kim are both back-end girls in this bantamweight division, and I really think you're in a risky betting spot. We ride Kim for the win. I think she'll land more significant strikes, fend off grappling attacks, and take it 29-28 on the cards. The line has Kim at a plus 108 underdog. Edwards minus 113 as the favorite. I like Kim to win. I don't love the bet of Kim, especially at that close line at, you know, just plus 108 best value. Over two and a half is minus 380. Kim by decision, plus 163. Kim for the win, underdog over Jocelyn Edwards. I think she takes her on a decision. Let's keep running up the card. I think for me, this is where things get super interesting. It's Michael Morales and Adam Fugit. Great last name for Fugit. That's just legendary at this point. I think his uh, Instagram handle, if I'm not mistaken, is, is like just Fugit or something like that. It, it's funny. It, it's it's something good. I, obviously, I don't remember exactly who it is, so I guess it ain't that funny. But something interesting. He, he's trying to he's trying to flow on the last name. There's the face off though. I think Michael Morales is a real prospect. He's got knockout power. He's extremely athletic. He has a very solid ground game. Fugit looks good from the kickboxing range. 33 versus 23. Michael Morales has so many of the intangibles in his favor. Taking the fight on short notice is Fugit. Granted, coming off a big win over Solomon Renfro. That was an impressive knockout and it was quick. I think Morales is going to sleep him though. If you look back on tape, Renfro, uh, excuse me, Fugit doesn't look as good as he did against Renfro all the time. He's not blasting through everyone. I think you're going to see Michael Morales stop him. He might mix in some grappling as well. I'm thinking first or second round knockout for the Michael Morales side. But if you're looking to bet the fight, you're in a terrible position because it's minus 575 Morales. Fugit plus 485. Morales to win by KOTKO is just minus 110. That is the most likely method of victory, in my opinion. Yeah, I think Morales gets the knockout here. Under two and a half rounds, minus 200. Probably under one and a half at minus 115 also. We're riding with Michael Morales to get his hand raised over Adam Fugit. And I think this is a real prospect to be excited about, to keep an eye on. I'm looking forward to seeing this matchup. And I mean, he moved to 14-0 and also. He's a solid 23-year-old in this welterweight division. Next one, Dracar Close, Rafa Garcia. I like Dracar Close in this spot. He's been the pick all week long with a fair bit of confidence. I just think he's going to be a tricky matchup for Garcia. Garcia... Pressure boxing style will look to wrestle. He's definitely going to look for takedowns here. When you look at Jakar Close, I think he kickboxes better. He also has a bit of a pressure game. Um, he fights well in the close range. I like his clinch work. I think he's going to have a speed edge over Garcia. I think he'll fend off wrestling attacks. Obviously, there could be some concern because of the neck injury previously to fighting Brandon Jenkins with the face-off with Jeremy Stevens. But Jenkins, he destroyed. I don't think he gets the knockout of Garcia here. I probably see him taking it on the cards. We'll pull up the face off for this matchup also. But I don't think the scales really change much because both guys look pretty status quo. Good shape. Solid face off. I think it's a win for Drakkar by a decision. Three rounds to zero. I do think he takes a full unanimous decision, 30-27. And I think it's a clean slate across the board. Minus 200 for close. Garcia plus 186. Let's see, let's see. Close to win by a decision, plus 118. I don't really like that bet. The over two and a half is a viable play, but I think Drakkar Close money line is a great option. He's a very confident pick for me, and I think when we talk parlays at the end, you're going to see him included uh, in that as well because I really think stylistically it's a good matchup for him against Garcia. Next fight of the night. Interesting heavyweight battle. Dante Mays, Hamdi Abdullah Wahab. I've been picking Mays all week, and it's hard for me to change that pick and go against him, but I am definitely interested to see what Hamdi can actually do. He's got a very good wrestling game. On the lower levels, he's got incredible knockouts. He's got a lot of power. 
He's a thick dude, 264 and a half, weighs nine pounds, nearly 10 pounds more than Dontel Mays. He's four inches shorter, but he's got an eight inch disadvantage in the reach. Dontel's an athletic and strong guy. I think Hamdi looks to wrestle. How will Dontel's defense be? This is an iffy fight for me, but I could see Mays getting a late stoppage of a tired Hamdi Abdullah Wahab. We don't know enough about Hamdi. We haven't seen him fight anyone good, so I will ride with the proven vet in Dontel Mays to get, I'm going to say, third round TKO over the hammer. But let's see if the hammer proves us wrong and that power is as real as uh, you're seeing on the regional scene. Plus 180 for Hamdi, Dontel Mays minus 186. I think if we can get this to load up here, I think we could go the under two and a half, minus 125 maybe, but I've been also kind of feeling the over one and a half for some reason at minus 165. Humby's going to look to blast them early. I think Dontel has the punch resistance to take a big shot, and I also think he'll be tough to manage from distance, though Dontel doesn't do a great job of fighting from range. I don't necessarily love the Dontel Maze bet, I've been kind of feeling the over one and a half all week, but it's a concerning spot with two hard-hitting heavyweights. I will lean it towards Don Tail, but Hamdi could be real. You got an Egyptian wrestler, Olympian, Greco-Roman, power puncher, lots of ifs, and we're going to find out a lot on uh, fight night. Next fight of the night, Drew Dober versus Rafael Alves. I've been picking Rafael Alves to pull off the upset all week. I like him to win by a submission here. I actually think he could catch the neck of Drew Dober. We've seen Dober submitted a couple times in the past. Alves shoots very well for the guillotine choke. I'm going to say he gets one in, man. There's the face off there between these two. Both guys in incredible shape. Dober jacked as always. He hits hard. I think he's going to start fast and I think we get a bit of a banger between these two. I think Alves finds a way to shoot for that neck and catches a sub in the first or second round by guillotine choke. I don't know how he finds it. Maybe Dober hurts Alves and then over rushes. Maybe Alves shoots for a takedown. There's a scramble. Maybe Dober shoots. I see a guillotine happening. At some point, Alves will find a position where he shoots for it, and I do think he's going to lock it up. I'm going to ride with Alves to win by sub. Plus 152, Alves. Dober minus 155. Let's see here. Alves to win by submission upwards of plus 500 wow it's a wide line but more so around plus 375 alves plus money plus 152 dog under two and a half is minus 160 we will ride with rafael alves to get his hand raised and call it win via submission over drew dober in an upset and i'm gonna call an action-packed fight Next fight is our featured prelim, Alex Morono versus Matthew Selmersberger. I've been leaning Alex Morono all week. I've been leaning that way. Not super high confidence. I do think Selmersberger is going to bring the heat, and you got a hell of a fight between these two. I know we can kind of look at common opponents and be slightly concerned because Selmersberger went distance with Chaos Williams and it took just one punch for Chaos Williams to sleep Morono. I expect entertainment between these two. I think it's going to be a violent war. Selmersberger is more tight with his striking and I think comes down the line better. Morono a little bit more wide, does have nice front kicks, pretty good powerful hooks. I'm leaning at Morono on the cards, plus 140, Selmersberger minus 150. I'm going to pick Alex Morono to get a decision here. Over two and a half is minus 170. Morono wins by decision, plus 235. I don't love that prop, but something to list. Morono underdog. I think he gets his hand raised over Selmersberger, man. I think it's going to be a tough fight. I think both guys can definitely take a round. I think it really comes down to the third. I kind of think we're seeing 29-28 competitive decision. Morono takes it on the cards over the game. Selmersberger, the great white versus semi the Jedi. Pretty good nickname battle too. Maybe even fight of the night. We're riding with Alex Morono to win. Let's jump towards the main card. If you guys haven't yet, make sure to smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe to the channel. It's Megomed and Kalayev taking on... Anthony Smith. And my apologies for leaving the uh, face-off picture up there for a moment. That's, that's the problem when we don't get the photos on MMA Junkie or Cage Side Press. We, we need the ceremonials up there. But at the time of recording here, got to screenshot them. Ankalaev Smith, 
looking at this fight, Ankalaev is going to win it. I'm picking him to win a decision. But Anthony Smith is being disrespected. The lines are terrible. Minus 500 is the best value on Ankalaev. Plus 480 on Anthony Smith. That's atrocious. We can look towards bringing the face off up. Let's see here. Anthony Smith. Face off. There it is. Close. Nose to nose. The physiques ain't going to change much here. This is a real fight. 206 for both men. Potential number one contender fight. Definitely for Ankalaev. I think Megomed Ankalaev is going to be technically superior and win a decision over Anthony Smith. But I don't think Anthony Smith goes down easy. I think he still scraps. He's got very good kickboxing from distance. He's got a submission game. He's fought the best of the best. I don't understand the plus money line on Smith. I don't understand the favorite status for Ankalaev. It is way too wide. It's the Dagestani bias that they have, unfortunately. We're going with Ankalaev to win. We'll pick him. Getting it done by a decision. But there's no value in the bet money line. Over 2.5, minus 160. Could be a play, but there's definitely possibility of a finish. And Kalayev decision, plus 105. I don't think it's worth a touch. We're riding with Megomed and Kalayev to get the win over Anthony Smith. But betting, it's a hideous line. Things get interesting here. Alexandre Pantoja taking on Alex Perez. Pantoja has wins over Kaikara France and Brandon Moreno, and they're fighting for the interim belt up at the top. A win for Pantoja. I think he's next in line, you know, some, Depending what happens with Davis and Figueredo. I ride Pantoja to win, though. Perez is a little bit bigger in the face off here. He brings a good wrestling game. He's a tricky kickboxer as well. Excellent low kicks. He's athletic and powerful. Pantoja has the trickier submission game. He's very dangerous when fights hit the floor. I think he's going to find the submission over Alex Perez here also. I'm picking Alexandre Pantoja win via submission. I think it's a fun striking battle. I think it's good competitive work on the ground. Wrestling favors Perez, but jiu-jitsu strongly towards Pantoja, and he will find that neck. I'm going rear naked choke. Alexandre Pantoja to get the win. Minus 163. For Pantoja, plus 170 for Alex Perez. Over two and a half, minus 137. Let's see. Pantoja wins by submission, plus 395. I like Pantoja by sub, plus 395. Let's bank on that. I'm picking Alexandre Pantoja to win by submission here. I think he locks up a sub over Alex Perez. Alexandre Pantoja, submission. We're calling it rear naked choke, and I think it's a great line to touch. I mean, not a bad money line play either. All right, at minus 163 range. Perez plus 170. Perez is good. He's athletic, but I don't see him winning. Pantoja, submission. Near top contender, if not. Next fight is our featured bout of the night. Derek Lewis. Takes on Sergey Pavlovich. I've been picking Pavlovich all week. Which I don't necessarily like. I don't want to be picking Pavlovich over Derek Lewis. I love D. Lou. But we have to be realistic here. I think that Derek Lewis could be past the prime. He's done bad in Texas previously. Pavlovich has only got one loss. It was to Alistair Overeem some years ago. And now he's looking like a real contender. He's got good boxing from distance. He's a patient striker who's got real knockout power. I think he sleeps Derek Lewis, man. Lewis just lost the tie to Ivasa. My confidence in him has dropped a fair amount. He's a brawler. Pavlovich, much more technical. And I see him winning the bout. We're going Pavlovich by KO. Minus 138. Lewis plus 140. It's spread. This line is spread. Under two and a half rounds, minus 440. Under one and a half, minus 145. Pavlovich wins by KO. TKO is plus 110. I'm going Pavlovich, KO, TKO, plus 110. But I'm not necessarily loving that play. I think better money line attack if you want. The under two and a half is guaranteed, but it's a terrible minus 350. Someone's getting slept, and I think it's Derek Lewis going to bed here. Pavlovich getting his hand raised, and I think he becomes a real contender with this win. Excellent face-off as well between these two. Next fight, Brandon Moreno, Kaikar France 2. I'm riding Moreno, guys. I've been riding him all week. Nothing's changing after the face-offs. I actually liked Moreno's confidence a ton here. I think he looked really good on the scale. I think he looked confident in the face-off. I think he beats Kaikar France on the scorecards for a second time, this time over the five rounds. 
Kai's going to be dangerous with his power for the first two rounds, round and a half, but I think Moreno continues to press. He's shown that he can take the pop of Cara France. He's quicker than Cara France, I believe. He's got better dexterity. I think the kicks are going to be coming up fast, and the wrestling difference is vast. There is a clear difference on the mat between these two. Kai Cara France, excellent striking, but Brandon Moreno is going to win this fight by a clear unanimous decision and become the interim champ. Two-time champ now. Minus 195, Moreno. Kai Car France, plus 191. Let's see here. Moreno to win by decision. Plus 140. Over four and a half rounds is minus 157. Moreno money line is minus 195. Kai Car France money line, plus 188. Brandon Moreno takes Kai Car France out. Wins this fight. Well, I guess he doesn't take him out. I think he'll take him on the cards. I know my guy Mike Finch is picking him, I think, inside of the distance. Win by sub also. But I think Moreno wins the decision over Kai and beats him for a second time. An interim champion. Maybe he fights Davison again. Maybe he's promoted to champion. We'll see what happens with that one. Let's jump to the main event. If you guys haven't, smash that like button and subscribe if you're new. It is Juliana Pena, Amanda Nunes 2. Listen, guys, I am riding the win towards Juliana Pena. I have to stick with it. Does lightning strike twice? I think it does, and I don't necessarily know if it's even lightning, though I'm saying that. But I think it's Amanda Nunes might be past the prime. And there's so much grit, toughness, and will to win on the side of Juliana. I don't necessarily like that Amanda Nunes is wearing headphones either in the face-off. Not a huge thing. Like, it's not like, oh, that's the end of the world. I know Juliana also looked a little fatigued on the scale. She had a tricky-ish weight cut, maybe. Was the last one to weigh in. Let's not write her off from that. Pena is extremely hard to put away. She's going to be difficult for Amanda to deal with. If Amanda is to win the fight, it's a patient game where she's going to look to win a unanimous decision. I'm going to lean towards Pena to win by sub. It's concerning, certainly, because Amanda Nunes, greatest woman of all time. And if she brings it back, okay. But I'm worried that it's not there anymore. I'm worried it's not there anymore. She changed gyms. That's a factor. She has a kid now. That's a factor. She's made millions. Minus 240, Nunes. Pena, plus 235. I'm picking Juliana Pena. I'm going to say she wins inside of the distance. Breaking Nunez again. I don't know the exact method. Maybe sub, maybe TKO. Plus 450 for Pena inside of the distance if she did that again. Nunez inside the distance, minus 115. The books, everybody, they're, they're expecting a Nunez win. I mean, she's much closer as a favorite. Minus 240, best value. It's a great line for Nunez. But I have to ride Juliana Pena. Even from watching The Ultimate Fighter, the mentality she has, I just see it being difficult for Amanda Nunes to deal with. She gets under Amanda's skin. Technically, on paper, yes, Nunes is the more talented fighter. But that grit, that toughness, that no quit, Juliana Pena has. And I'm picking her to get the win in the main event and still champion of the world. We got a pretty solid card coming up for UFC 277. Let's jump to some parlays. I'm going to keep it light with the parlays. Don't go nuts with them, but let's look. If there's anything we maybe want to throw down on, I think Brandon Moreno, the confidence has built all, all week long. I like Pantoja, and I also really am feeling Drakkar close. I think this is a solid play, plus 228, Moreno, Pantoja, Drakkar close. If you want to get a little crazier with it, add in a Pena underdog, brings you to nearly plus 1,000. You don't necessarily have to do that. If you add in somebody like Ankalaev, it doesn't add much. There's really no purpose for that. Maybe you play Poteria at slight plus money, plus 555. If you went Poteria and you had Nunes in the slate, nearly plus 2,000. I think a safe three-fighter play is the original one listed. Moreno, Pantoja, Drakkar Close. I think this is a solid attack. I think this is one that probably comes through. I don't think you need to attack these crazy-ass favorites, even though I do think they could win. With Kose missing weight, I've lost confidence a little bit. So I don't necessarily want to throw him uh, on the slate. I don't want to have him in the parlay. I like this three-fighter play more than anything. We can go a little nuts with it just to finish out, but I definitely don't recommend going nuts with it and actually doing this unless you are going very light. Poteria, Kose, Pena, Pavlovich, Close, Pantoja, Moreno, plus 5,091 for that one. And if you also played the over one and a half in this fight, plus 8,237. Could happen, for sure. Not recommending it, but if you want to throw down you know, a couple bucks at it for fun, that's a lottery ticket play. Two, three fighters max if you're actually looking to bring some quality value and cash back. 
Much love to everybody watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the Weigh In Recap Show. Smash that like button if you're new. Subscribe. Turn those post notifications on and share the video as well. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you have anything to say, if you just enjoy the content, make sure to drop a W in the chat as well. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace, everybody, and see you for the fight companion.